Hello and welcome to this episode of Sport Techie Live. I am Dan Kaufman, Sport Techie's Managing Director. Thank you for being here. This is leveraging a new era of stadium technology to improve operations and fan experiences. It's powered by our partners at Spot On. Thanks for being here. I'm going to go over a few logistics to let you know how we like to do these Sport Techie Live episodes if this is your first time being here. Um, but first, I also want to make sure that I bring up a QR code that Spot On has provided for us. Go ahead and scan that QR code now. We'll bring it up later as well, but there's uh, some good stuff to, to see there, a demo if you want to check it out. So while I'm going through the logistics, I will not be offended if you go ahead and scan that and, and check it out. But let me get to those logistics, then I'll introduce our panelists, and then we'll get going. So here's what I want to make sure you're clear on. Uh, we love your engagement here. We want your interaction as an audience. We don't want to just sit up here and talk to you. We want you interacting with us and telling us really what we should be talking about. So step one, introduce yourself in the chat. There's a chat icon on the right hand side. Say hello. Tell us where you're coming from. Tell us what you do. If you see people you know who are introducing themselves, go ahead and say hello to them. We love that. And then right next to the chat bubble, there's a questions bubble as well. Put your questions in throughout, starting now and throughout, and we'll weave them in throughout. Do not wait till the end. There is not a specific Q&A time. So go ahead and put your questions in there and we'll do our best to get to them. We also have a couple of polls right next to the questions tab. There's a polls tab. Uh, please take a look at the polls. Do it now uh, and, and submit your response to those polls. We'll discuss them maybe about one third of the way through here and we'll take a look at the results. Okay, so with that, I want to give Kenny and Wayne an opportunity to introduce themselves very quickly and then we'll dive right in. And why don't I start with Kenny? Kenny, go ahead. Great, thanks, Dan. Uh, Kenny Farrell, I'm the Senior Vice President of Marketing and Business Analytics here at the Arizona Diamondbacks. I'm looking forward to starting my 25th season with the club. I'll get a little bit into the details of my uh, journey in, as we go through the day here, but uh, you know my uh, areas of um, operation include marketing, business analytics, and also our retail concessions, uh, and uh, ticket operations. So um, working on a lot of things to make sure that we provide the best experience for our fans and excited to be here today, Dan. Thank you, Kenny. Wayne, go ahead. Oh, perfect. Um, so Wayne Scarcella, EVP, uh, sports and entertainment at Spot On. Um, we were just recently acquired by Spot On in, in October. Prior to that, uh, I spent seven years with Appetize and prior to that, 20 years with uh, Micro slash Oracle. So I've got a good 30 years in the industry um, really excited to, you know, get through some of the content today. Thanks, Wayne. Thanks, Kenny. Uh, to the audience, go ahead and grab that QR code and scan it. Uh, we're going to drop it down shortly, but uh, take a few moments to scan it if you can. We'll bring it back up later as well. And make sure you submit your questions. We want your questions coming in and introduce yourself in the, in the chat. I'm going to start with this question, guys. Um, we're going to talk as we go through here about technologies that can be used to improve efficiencies, improve fan experience at the venue. But uh, and that's always a good thing, generally speaking. Right. But I think it's a particularly good thing at a time where there might be labor shortages or increased costs of goods and supplies, as many people are facing right now. Let's start with just some a base level there and a background there. You know, what actually are you guys seeing in the marketplace? You know, Kenny, in particular for for you when it comes to kind of challenges with labor and, and cost of goods. And then Wayne, more generally, we'll get to you when, uh, you know, more broadly in the marketplace. I'd like to hear your opinion, but let's start with Kenny. Yeah, when we uh, you know opened the 2021 season, it had been over a, you know 18 months that we'd had fans in our ballpark, and I think we hit it at a kind of particularly interesting time. Um, you know, we opened on April 9th, 2021, with 20,000 fans in our ballpark, and at that point, I don't think the world was really kind of even talking yet about labor shortages or supply chain issues, and so we kind of lived that along with some technology you know problems that we were you know adjusting to a new world very quickly. Um, in a really, you know, live way. So we were, you know, we were there and we, and that was something that we ultimately, you know, on April 10th, the day after opening day, started to look forward to our future on how do we solve these things short term and long term. And um, it definitely had an impact on the fan experience. And, you know, people were excited to get back out uh, at that point and kind of come out and enjoy baseball, enjoy live entertainment. And, you know, we were seeing the experience not live up to what our expectations had been in the past. And, mm -hmm. and that's just something that, you know, can't be the, the, the solution. So uh, for us, it was a very real kind of real time situation and uh, something we had to kind of adjust for as quickly as possible. 
and then start to kind of look at how do we like start to figure out some long-term solutions mm -hmm. that can adjust the way we do business to account for you know whether this is a new norm or temporary none of us really know so we have to kind of be prepared for all situations mm -hmm. interesting thank you kenny wayne would you add anything more from a broader perspective from the folks you're talking to in the industry yeah absolutely um it's kind of interesting because you know covid you know somewhat initiated and ignited in some ways the move to more and more self-service mm -hmm. so just in general you know providing um, fans with the ability to transact um, with their own mobile device or walk up to a self-service checkout or a kiosk um, and then you know as things started to turn back on like what kenny was mentioning um, the, the new challenge was the labor shortage just in general. Um, and, and it wasn't so much of, you know, potentially not finding enough um, cashiers and operators, but a lot of times I was getting brought into situations where there were no shows of, you know, hundreds that would not show up for work because of COVID as an example, or for other reasons. Mm -hmm. So it just naturally kind of took place that while we were solving, um, you know, the issues and challenges around COVID, with the technology of bringing in more and more self-service ways of ordering and going cashless, it just automatically kind of um, addressed the labor shortage as well. Mm -hmm. And then secondly is having a technology that can flex and move so that if you did have, uh, you know, a ton of no-shows as an example, you have the ability to take a point of sale and use it as a self-service kiosk as an example, or very easily pop up QR code mobile ordering where you maybe didn't intend to have mobile ordering, but because of that particular day of the, the amount of no-shows or the lack of employees, you're able to kind of move and be nimble um, for your events. Interesting, thank you, Wayne. To those folks who are trickling in, make sure you introduce yourself in the chat if you'd like to and say hello to the other folks who are introducing themselves and make sure you submit your questions throughout. We will get to the questions as they come in and there's no specific Q&A period and we love to have your questions. All right, my next question, I wanna, uh, again, turn it to Kenny to start. Um, Kenny, your background's really interesting and you really, it appears at least, only been in kind of the, the concession and hospitality uh, realm for about a year, of, although you've been with the club for, for significantly longer than that. Talk about your origin story. What was the work prior to this? How did that work help prepare you for what you're doing now? And, and what are some of the similarities and differences? Yeah, thanks. I have a pretty non-traditional career path, uh, you know, one, being at the same club for 24 years now, and, and then two, really, you know, changing, um, you know, my path significantly along the way from where I started. So my initial background really was in ticket operations. That's where I started with the club. Um, and, you know, I look back at, at times uh, in 2001 when the D-backs won the World Series, you know, my, my big opportunity there was managing an inbound call center. Um, you know, I, I look back at times and think, we didn't have barcodes on the tickets at that point. Um, and, you know, ultimately, you know, moving into a role of director of ticket operations is kind of my first leadership opportunities. You know, some of those early opportunities I had were still all about finding the right technology and technology partners. Mm -hmm. You know, as an MLB club, that was at the birth of MLB, uh, at the, you know, really kind of as online sales started to really take over phone sales. Uh, as the way that people were interacting with technology. And, you know, um, at the time, as a, from a ticketing perspective, we worked with Pat Yolen and um, had the opportunity to kind of really build a lot of the new uh, features with them. And so, you know, I learned early that working with the right technology partners uh, was going to be important to our ways that we we're going to have success with our fans. Um, you know, as my career progressed, I was given the opportunity to, you know, really start and build an analytics department. Um, and again, it wasn't something I was going to be able to do on my own, or I wasn't going to be able to solve those problems myself. Uh, certainly not one that thinks that I have all the solutions, but as we looked at, you know, how do we partner with at the time Ticketmaster live analytics to kind of help us improve our market segmentation and our projection process and our retention rates, um, you know, dynamic pricing came into the scene, uh, was a key part of what we were doing in analytics at the time. So finding the right partner. Uh, we were partnered with QQ for a long time uh, in that space. So again, it was this kind of like constant, like how do we make improvement? Uh, what can we do? How do we hire the right people? Of course, but continuing to look at, you know, what those opportunities were to find the right partners that could really help you build and grow. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from there, ultimately, as from an analytics perspective, 
you know, we were trying to understand who our customers were, how fans are different, how they, you know, need to be targeted. How can we continue to use the data we're gathering in a smarter way? And that led to my opportunity to kind of take on the marketing role and ultimately try to deliver that kind of custom content to our fans. Um, and really, I think, you know, in the last five or to seven years has been kind of the, the real institution of putting that data into action. I think there was kind of like a period of time where we were able to start collecting, but we weren't sure how to use it. And in the last five or six years, I think we've really started to figure out how to, how to use that to make sure that we can deliver the right product to the right fan at the right time, that we can measure and, tr and actually truly judge what is successful and what isn't. And then, you know, ultimately, I think within that, it's, you know, making sure that we make those decisions efficiently so that we can kind of stretch our spend further and then ultimately have more impact on more fans for more games and continue to see growth over time. So that had been kind of the strategy and my background up to this point. And then coming into, you know, the concessions and retail space kind of prior to the 2021 season, what was really amazing to me is how much I learned in 2021. You know, as a guy that's been in this building right behind me for all of these years, there was just things I saw in a completely different way. You know, I think maybe before more transactionally thinking like, all right, we got people in the building. And now it was, you know, like, well, what are they doing once they're in here? Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, kind of like I mentioned before, at that time, we were adjusting with new mobile ordering system, new contact lists, new cash lists, uh, and, you know, frankly, old technology that just wasn't working well and we saw that just kind of also not work and um as we start to figure out like what do we need to do here it's that recognition that we need a the right partners and then also you know plan for now but also plan for the things that we don't know mm -hmm. um there's been just so much change there was not a ton of venues really having any success with mobile ordering in 2018 2019 mm -hmm. and now i don't think there's a venue that ha doesn't have it um, you know, everybody's at least starting to kind of move in that direction. And how do we kind of move towards more of a self-serve uh, operation? So I think my entire background has kind of led me to be cohesive here. And from kind of, you know, our perspective, like I want to market the product that actually meets, meets the expectations of what the actual experience is. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to make sure that we're analyzing, marketing, and then fan servicing in a way that kind of is very cohesive across our entire organization. Mm, interesting. Thank you, Kenny. Um, to the audience, uh, make sure you complete the polls. Uh, I want to get to one of the polls in just a second, but also submit your questions when you've got them. Don't wait till the end and introduce yourself in the chat. Kenny, I'm going to ask a question, but I'm also going to bring up the, the poll, a first poll result that I want to talk through. It's the one at the top and then we'll get to the second one later. But uh, the question, Kenny, is, is really when you think about technologies that you, you want to implement and, you know, how that process starts from beginning to end. How do you make the decision between whether or not that's something, oh, I think we can address that, you know, internally with current tech that we have in place or some sort of innovative process that we have in place versus, okay, we got to look for a vendor. We got to go outside and address this internally. Talk to us a little bit about that when looking for a solution to a problem and maybe some specific examples you, that you have. But before you do that, you know, keep that in mind. I want to share the results of the survey here. The, the first poll uh, was for venue operators or vendors working with venue operators over the past year, what has been the most impactful use of technology to streamline operations and improve fan experience? Um, maybe not surprisingly, the, the most votes went to contactless entry and security technology to streamline fans entering the stadium. Given COVID and everything, I think that makes sense. And then we kind of have a split between two that are very similar. Uh, you got about 40% of the vote saying, you know, self-service only tech for concessions and retail and a combination of self-service and traditional cashiers. So close there. Uh, and any reactions you have to that, Kenny, would be would be great. But also to my question, uh, feel free to dive in. Well, it's notable as we sit here kind of talking about the concession and retail space that security and entry still takes the top of the poll because mm -hmm. that was another area that we struggled with. Mm -hmm. um, and it struggled, you know, partly based on staffing. I mean, it was a significant piece of that. Yeah. Um, and then just, you know, um, you know, a lot of kind of diversity in terms of like crowd size and changes and just things that are kind of changing the world and expectations. So mm -hmm. it's actually another area that we're putting significant investment in as we head into 22 is trying to make that entire entry process much faster. Yeah. Uh, you know, ultimately, we're trying to provide entertainment. Waiting outside the venue is not entertaining. Yep. So like, how do we get people in here quickly? Um, and then, you know, certainly there's an all of the above aspect to this, right? Um, as we look at, you know, I think it's self-serve, um, I think has its place and we're continuing to find ways to, to do that effectively uh, in our building, particularly like in grab and go type situations. 
certainly mobile order for pickup uh, can be an opportunity. But I, th I think we have to recognize too that it's, it's different than the grocery store where I go every week. Um, you know, most of our fans come to one game a year. And yeah. so I think we also have to be kind of respectful of the fact that a ton of people are just not here all the time. And so they're not all going to figure out how to do everything in the most savvy way when they're here. And we need to also balance that with their ability just to find a way to get a beer and a hot dog. Yeah. Um, and so I think there's balance to all of this that's going to be important as we kind of think about the future. Yeah, interesting. What about to the concept of internal versus external kind of finding solutions for the problems you're facing, whether it's tech you've got versus looking for a vendor? Yeah, we're, we're really lucky that we have a really strong technology team here and a development team led by our CIO, Bob Zweig, um, that has put a lot of focus on building internal tools and fan facing tools when appropriate. So when we're solving kind of, you know, business problems, we first step back and just try to look at like, what are the available solutions and then kind of what are our available capabilities and when mm -hmm. do we want to kind of find the right partner? Um, you know, in the space uh, of spot on, um, you know, this was certainly an area where we knew we were gonna have to go external from the kind of core technology that was going to power everything. Yeah. But we also recognize that there are places that we do want to build internal tools that need to be able to integrate with whatever we're kind of, you know, maybe uh, setting at the middle of that system. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'll give you a couple examples. Uh, one, one big, one a little smaller, but, you know, uh, about 2017, uh, we rolled out uh, and ultimately decided to build our entire CRM system in house. Um, and it was, you know, a beast and intimidating. Uh, we have now ruled out three versions of our in house CRM system that is built to customize for our outbound sales strategy for wow. our sales and service team. Are you um, literally, you're literally coding this on the back end? Liter literally coding, coding wow. and building this ourselves. <laughs> And we recognize there are big, strong, powerful companies in the space, mm -hmm. but we also recognize that none of them provide exactly what we need out of the box. Mm. And so when we kind of look at cost and time and customizations and our needs, we have to make those decisions. Um, and that's one that's gone really, really well for us mm. and continues to work in a way where we can still uh, partner with third party technologies to uh, enhance our sales and service operations while providing like what we think is the best um, customizations for what our team needs to really understand our fans and kind of leverage all the data that we have. Yeah. Uh, so that was a big, massive project that we're super proud of and that we think has really been the right decision for us to stay internal. Another kind of internal um, you know, tool that, you know, a little bit more simplistic is we have our, our DBAX Kids Club. It's one form of loyalty that we have you know, focused on really building that next generation of DBAX fans. Uh, and we had had like traditional physical cards and physical vouchers and physical redemptions. And ultimately, you know, as an MLB club, we are also uh, connected to the MLB ballpark app as our main app tool to our fans. And we've been able to build a kids club model that allows them to, you know, load in their own kids photos and keep their whole family together and uh, offer them options for prizes and badges and and ways to engage and embed that in the ballpark app as a tool that was just very specific to the type of loyalty we need for people that might just be coming to a few games a year. Mm -hmm. um, and yet at the same time, as I've mentioned across the landscape of my career, and now with spot on, there are just, you know, also very, very important times when we just need to go with the best and the brightest. We yeah. just need to work with what's, you know, known and consistent and that we don't try to like take on more than we can chew. And so, you know, we're always having those conversations um, but making sure that really it's what do we need and how do we need it to operate that we kind of start with before making a decision on kind of internal external. Yeah. Very interesting. Uh, great, great answer, Kenny. Thank you. We've got a couple questions that came in from the audience. I will get to them shortly. Thanks for the questions. Wayne, I want to bring you in here though. Um, we just talked about kind of internal versus external. Let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about like the now versus the future. Uh, and I think it's a challenge that a lot of people working in technology and sports face, right? It's a question of when you're looking at a solution, a tech solution, how do you balance the need to address the, you know, the immediate thing that needs to be addressed, but also trying to preserve it so that it'll be functional two, three, four, five years down the line. Do you have um, some thoughts on that and how you approach it with your customers? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, the way things kind of played out uh, with the Diamondbacks um, as they were going through the selection process, um, wasn't necessarily unique, but they had the, the opportunity to use an entire season 
to kind of test things out and kind of allow us to uh, try some things with them. So the focus is really looking at, like Kenny mentioned, you've got a core platform that we provide. It's called, you know, it's, it's called the basic plumbing. Let's, let's just say that. Mm-hmm. Um, but when it comes to those other technologies that are maybe here today and maybe coming in tomorrow, like, you know, cryptocurrency is a good example. Um, we have products that we can offer like native products that we can offer off the shelf from a mobile technology side of things as an example, but, um, with the MLB app, um, you know, they selected venue ties as their mobile providers. So we work really closely with venue ties. So we can kind of give you that, um, that class of choosing best of, uh, concept when it comes to the technology, whether it's today or tomorrow. So, um, and then secondly, I, I like where Kenny was going with, uh, the CRM platform. We, we built our, our entire infrastructure on an open, open API um, platform that allows us to integrate easily with third party technologies, but also with CRM solutions, even though um, in Kenny's case, it's a homegrown solution. It's not one of the, you know, the big brands that are out there that are building these platforms, but we shared that information as part of a pilot program as we were testing our technologies throughout the stadium, um, you know, throughout the season, we, we would fire up the technology and see if it was a good fit for this location, move it to another location. Um, and then at the same time, they had full access to the API so that they can actually see how it's going to integrate with their CRM platform. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, really looking at the platform as a whole in general, just being open and allowing other technologies to connect easily and adapt so that, again, two years from now, three years from now, there could be something new, whether it's facial recognition that, you know, the team wants to look at for not just access control to the building, but also transacting at the point of sale. You know, that's kind of another um, area that, you know, we've been looking at as well. Interesting. Kenny, any thoughts on the the concept of thinking about now while also thinking about five years from now? It, it's difficult because the tech is changing so rapidly. How do you approach it with your department? Yeah, I mean, that was critical, honestly, in terms of kind of what we're doing right now is, you know, we're making investments and we need to be smart about those investments. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, it's hard to predict the future. Mm -hmm. Uh, And there's things that, you know, we we maybe aren't doing today that we may add later. We also work with, you know, within a kind of overall system. Right. So as an MLB club, we work with MLB. We we work within the MLB ballpark app. We work Mm -hmm. with external forces. So we have to be prepared for both the things that we're planning and, and deciding to do as well as, you know, things that just may emerge from the external world around us. Mm-hmm. And so just that flexibility of integration is kind of really the kind of core piece of that is like, mm-hmm. how do we try to make sure that whatever we're doing, um, you know, whether we can go back to Wayne and say, Hey, you have a new great new product that we'd like to add in. Sure. But what if somebody else has, you know, the, the next great thing in, in some way that still needs to be able to communicate, by customer, through the app, through tickets, through gate, through concessions. Um, and so it's it's trying to make sure that we kind of have that best in business uh, opportunity and that we don't corner ourselves into a situation where we limit our flexibility kind of moving forward. So mm-hmm. it's definitely a key piece of what we're evaluating as we're looking at every, every technology we're, we're creating or any partner that we're working with. Yeah, well said. All right, let's jump to the second poll and we've got some great questions coming in. Thank you to the audience for the questions. I'm gonna get to some of them right after we talk about the poll here. And one of them actually directly references the poll, but here's the second poll. And thanks for your responses here, audience members. In a perfect world, what would be the top thing you would want, you would do today to create a more frictionless fan experience? 52% of the vote says capture comprehensive usable data and analytics across all segments of your operations. So heavy on data here. Uh, in the responses here. And in fact, the question that came through is one of our first questions from John Flynn. And I want to get to it now. John, thanks for the question. John says the second poll shows using data to help create the frictionless fan experience the most voted on. How do you use data to create real time adjustments to your strategy to ensure an ever increasing fan experience? Kenny, you want to tackle that one? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ways we could go with what we'd like still like to know better about everybody coming in. I mean, I think you know, one of our core initiatives of MLB is identified fans and attendance and just trying to make sure we know who's really coming every day. Um, you know, obviously the shift in the last five years towards mobile has helped that greatly, uh, but we still just want to make sure we are aware every time, you know, I'm bringing Wayne as a friend, maybe make sure that we just know that he's here. Uh, but, you know, then also just kind of consumption habits, you know, like what are people consuming? What do they expect? What are their needs? How do we make sure that we're meeting those needs? Uh, whether it's to better help them find what they're looking for, Again, a ton of fans still just come to our ballpark maybe once a year. So, you know, what do we do to help them guide them to know, like, 
I walk in, I see a big crowd. Should I just get in this line or I should go find closer to my seat? Where am I sitting? What are the service options there? What are the wait times that we have? Um, and then another kind of key piece of data that we're always continuing to like look that's been very helpful for how we build our segments is around fan avidity. Um, you know, fan avidity is uh, varies greatly in baseball. I think we provide a platform where, you know, all kinds of fans can come enjoy a baseball game. We have a lot of games and we have an affordable product. And so, yes, you have diehards that are here to watch every pitch. You have people that are a little bit more casual. Uh, certainly in a market like Arizona, we have you know people that have fans of their hometown team where they grew up as well as the D-backs. And so the more we can know about kind of fan avidity and what their preferences are, the better I think we can like figure out how to customize content for them and make sure that we improve their experience as best as possible. Hmm. Well said, well said. Wayne, feel free to add to that, but I also want to get to this other question that Siobhan put in here. Uh, and that question, I'll, I'll say it, but you can answer either one, Wayne. I'll give it that way. And then I want to turn it to Kenny for this one too. Uh, Siobhan, uh, forgive me, I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, Siobhan Sherbovich asks, what are some segments of fan data from the street to seat experience on a game day that teams do not have today that they wish they had? So maybe Kenny, think about that one for a minute. Wayne, you're, you're, you're free to answer that one, but also to talk more generally about uh, data collection and how it's beneficial. Yeah, I, I think the second one is definitely for Kenny. Um, <laughs> so this goes back to that um, open API platform. Um, we, we use um, a couple of different tools to provide the teams uh, as well as some of our partners with that granular level of data. So you can get down to that fan, down to that check, down to that item to understand what the purchase trends are. Um, we're re we've recently invested heavily in getting into more of the forecasting and predictive sales now so that you can understand when a certain opponent is in the building, there will be a slight change in purchase trends. Um, weather related incidents also impact, obviously. So we're spending um, a fair amount of time now working with teams in, in expanding that, not just providing a dashboard. Um, which will give you the intelligence you're looking for to understand how to analyze a game or, you know, homestand after it's completed. But we're now looking at trying to turn that more to be more predictive and, and allow the teams to know what's coming versus, you know, kind of react to what's happening. Mm -hmm. so, so that's something we're working on pretty extensively right now. And something obviously we'll work with the Diamondbacks on for this coming season. Interesting. Kenny, uh, the stage is yours to answer the question of what is the, data that you wish you had, but you don't have. What's the magic bullet? Um, <laughs> I don't know what the magic bullet. I mean, some of the things I've talked about, but you know, like, again, we have just such a diverse fan base. You know, I think we're a great place for people to come out and, you know, have a, a business meeting and entertain and looking for kind of a premium high end experience, but we're also a great place to bring your family and, you know, have affordable options and look for, you know, value items and, 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 and you know, kids space and, just how do we make sure that we're kind of getting people pointed in the right direction and how do we know more about who they are and what they're looking for as they're coming in and i think there's a lot of that information that we have so i don't know that it's new data that we're looking to acquire i think it's just the action that we're still trying to like figure out exactly what do we do with it exactly yeah. how do we deliver it you know there's only so much information you can try to get somebody to consume and so how do we continue to break that up in a way that's still segmented, whether it's, you know, know before you go guides that are customized based on segments so that people kind of have a better sense of where to come in and where to go and how to how to interact. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's I think it's less about the data that we need and more about how do we continue to like figure out how to put that into action in a way that fans truly can understand how to consume. Again, with a particular focus on a lot of those casual fans that maybe only come to a couple games a year that just may not be experts at the experience. But so they need the most kind of help and support to find their way. But, you know, they may also be a little more challenging to actually communicate with in terms of what the, some of those options are. Interesting. Thank you, Kenny. There's more questions coming in. Keep them coming in. I will get to them. I want to turn it over to Wayne, though. Wayne, I, I'd love for you to dive a little bit more into, you know, when you approached Kenny about spot on services and some more details about what you can offer. And what was that conversation like? How did you approach it? And then, you know, Kenny, after that, I, you know, what was your response to that? Just as, as, as frankly as possible as you can be. And, and why did you ultimately end up deciding that it was the right marriage? So I, I think that, you know, what we did uh, with the Diamondbacks and, you know, specifically working with Kenny um, was perfect. Uh, we, we actually just met more in a, what I'd say an informal way. We didn't go through 
an extensive RFP process. Uh, we flew out. We actually went to a game, uh, actually a couple of games. We witnessed, you know, where the, um, the bottlenecks were, some of the technology that was currently deployed. Um, and I think uh, there's somewhere in the range of four to five different point of sale technologies in, in the venue last season. So it allowed us to kind of walk the property together, um, speak with the operators and, and honestly firsthand experience um, what a game was like, not just for the fan, but for the operator as well, so that we could look at, well, if we were to, you know, kind of change up the way this flow works or use this technology, we can increase uh, throughput, right? So obviously that's going to increase revenue. It's going to impact the fan. It's going to give them a better experience, um, so on and so forth. So that's the, that's what I really liked about the engagement we had with Kenny and the team was that we didn't really go through a formal process, sitting in a boardroom with, you know, a, a stacked presentation and a deck and everything else that you would typically see in a sales cycle. From there, we deployed a team out um, again for a couple of events, and that's where that pilot program kicked in. And that's where, honestly, the team was able to kind of kick the tires before they bought the system to truly understand like, okay, um, you know, we met, we discussed this, you guys have observed, and this is what you suggested, let's see it work, right? So then we were able to kind of put um, the wheels in motion and get everything up and running, go through a couple successful events, kind of learn from those experiences. And then again, huddle up at the end of the night and kind of speak to like, okay, what did you think? You know, how did the system perform? Um, were there any adjustments that we had to make? Do you see the value? Um, if not, then let's, you know, let's talk further and see what else we can do to potentially make that happen. So I'd say that, you know, for us, it was a, it was a great opportunity to just kind of work together over, you know, whatever it was, eight, nine months, just to make sure that we were a good fit from a company perspective and more so, you know, we provided a technology stack that gave them what they were looking for without having to use four or five different technology providers, but then be open to working with a different mobile provider, as an example, and have the ability to give them what they're looking for from a CRM and all the data that they were looking to get. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Kenny, why was it the right fit? Well, I'd step back and just kind of point out like crisis did, you know, provide opportunity that probably wouldn't have emerged. I mean, yeah. Honestly, if we were just kind of looking to replace, you know, technology in the space and everything was going well, maybe we would have reached out in July and said, hey, let's start a conversation about 2022. But because we struggled out of the gate when we opened, we started this conversation in April. And so the long runway was was helpful in a few ways. And I you know, agree with what Wayne mentioned in terms of just, you know, the relationship being really important. But, you know, certainly they were competing. Uh, you know, as we were looking at kind of multiple options within the landscape and who do we want to work with and all the questions we've been talking about, you know, today. Um, and, you know, I think when we got to be able to implement a pilot, there's certainly kind of a, a prove it, you know, opportunity for, for them and for us to kind of watch how that operates. And, you know, frankly, I think, you know, the technology was going to clearly be better than what we had, right? And any provider that came in here was going to provide you know, a machine that could be used much faster and much easier by our by our staff and for our customers than what we were using. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a piece. I mean, it was great to see it in action. But what was probably more important in terms of the process that we went through, and we, we launched the pilot live here, I think around August 2nd, uh, and had it live for the last two months. It was the opportunity to watch the team actually do the installation mm -hmm. and then deal That's with cool. things that hadn't come up. You know, mm -hmm. hey, by the way, we have a season ticket holder discount that we probably hadn't really talked about. How, can you guys connect to this other third party system that we're currently using to figure out how to like make that work? And, you know, going through challenges of like, I don't know if that can be done this quickly to we've got it figured out and we can do it. Um, that problem solving and kind of ability to watch them and see how they react to the real life situation beyond, you know, just showing us, you know, what the technology was going to look like. Uh, really built a lot of confidence on us. And that's what really, I think, helped us solidify everything and, and move forward. So, you know, we love to kind of, you know, definitely, you know, expect the best um, yeah. from our partners and um, and to be able to kind of watch it and be kind of beyond, like Wayne said, not just a bunch of slides of things it could do, because uh, anybody can, and a lot of other, you know, competitors did show us those things. And I'm sure a lot of other competitors have great technology, but we got to see the people in action behind that and that was really a big factor of what we were able to accomplish. Thank you, Kenny. Some good questions coming in. I'm going to get to one of them now. And then uh, I've got uh, at least one more question that I'm hoping to get in here um, before we have to close. But uh, let's see. This question is from Jamie Shortill. Jamie says, thoughts on extending uh, security tech like facial recognition technologies to 
A, enhance attendance analytics for sponsors, B, more frictionless commerce in venue, and C, enhance capture for loyalty programs. Kenny, have you all looked into uh, facial recognition technology? Yeah, we've been kind of working on pilots uh, in the last year. The league is helping kind of lead a lot of that across uh, baseball and taking a look at kind of what are the current technologies, um, you know, what, um, how could they be implemented to, you know, actually improve the fan experience uh, in a reasonable way. And then, you know, exactly how do we kind of run and roll those things out and in which spaces. So we're just certainly excited about that. And it's a perfect example of one of those things that's not quite real today. Uh, doesn't seem like it's gonna be quite there in 22, you know, whether it's two years or five years or never, you know, I think we'll have to kind of watch and see how it continues to get adopted and how people, um, you know, continue to interact with some of these new technologies, but we want to be prepared regardless and make sure that we have everything kind of, uh, flexible to be able to move in a most nimble direction. Mm, interesting. Wayne, feel free to hit on that if you all have talked to some vendors well, that you want to partner that, with. That, that's interesting the way Kenny framed it up is perfect. We've done a couple of proof of concepts and um, I'll call it a pilot, but it, it hasn't um, taken off as much as I think some of us all thought it would. Um, mm. Not to say it won't, it's just we've done a few of these things now and we're just trying to you know see what, what will come of it. Mm, interesting. I'm gonna get to one more audience question and then I've got my last question for, for you guys here. Uh, this question is from Ian J. Ian, thanks for the question. Ian talks about redundancies, you know, how to ensure redundancies, uh, uh, you know, in case something goes wrong. And, um, you know, he says, how do you view the importance of that in terms of resource allocation? For example, last week, one of the stations on our local transit system lost all its kiosk and all its digital ticket readers. Kenny, do you wanna tackle that one first? Uh, I think Wayne should tackle that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first and foremost, you got to have the ability to work in, you know, an offline and a semi offline mode, meaning like if you have connectivity uh, disruption from um, your hosting service, right, the cloud, um, our solution will go into a semi offline state, which means it allows the entire venue to still operate so that bartenders can ring in tabs and orders can be sent back to the kitchen, cashiers, you know, will see a minimal impact. Um, as well. Uh, so it gives them the ability to operate at that level. If there's a full outage of network, meaning the entire LAN is gone, in addition to uh, the connection to the cloud, every one of the units can actually drop into a standalone mode, which basically makes them more or less like an independent cash register. You'll have some limits. So if you had a loyalty platform, as an example, um, that was fully integrated coming through that cloud connection, you're obviously going to have to uh, work through that. You're not going to have like full blown loyalty or stored value. You will have credit card ability to transact credit cards in a store and forward mode, right? Completely um, PCI compliant. So at least we can minimize the impact to the guest and the fan to allow them to transact and purchase product and you know kind of run business as usual in either a semi or a, a full offline mode. Thanks, Wayne. All right, I'm going to jump to, to my final question. But before I do that, I want to thank everyone for being here. Um, you can see episodes of Sport Techie Live on demand at live.sporttechie.com, including this episode if you joined late and you want to see a, a replay. And I'm bringing up the, the QR code again here for folks who joined after our introductions. We, we brought this up at the intro of the session, but I'll bring it up now. Make sure you scan that code. Our partners at Spot On have provided everyone with a demo. Check it out and um, and make sure you complete the, the forms there. Let's see, what else did I want to say before I get to the question? Oh, um, next week, we've got another great episode. Next week, Sport Techie Live, same time, same day, 1230 on Wednesday, 1230 Eastern time. We will be uh, into the March Madness mode, and we will talk about the tech roadmap for NIL for college sports. So name, image, and likeness, tech roadmap for college sports. That's next week. All right, my question is this, guys, and we'll, we'll go out on this one. Um, Kenny, sports betting relatively recently legalized in Arizona. Um, how does that all play into your strategy for a, uh, a fan experience that is frictionless uh, while also giving them this additional engagement opportunity? Yeah, we're excited. We're partnered with uh, Caesar Sportsbook here at Chase Field. Uh, we'll be opening up uh, a brand new sports book um, this year, which I'll, I'll speak to as well. But, you know, certainly a lot of engagement opportunity across the sports landscape and continue to give fans, you know, reasons to stay involved and, and stay connected on a daily basis. 
um, and ultimately, you know, build that avidity and, and uh, you know, provide that, you know, additional reasons for people to come down to the park and watch games. But I think even as we look at like our sports book that we're building uh, on our plaza, it, it reminds me of this topics related like the poll earlier, like what's the most important thing? And it sort of becomes an all of the above and, and we're in the self-selected world. What we've seen in sports gaming is the opportunity is in the app. But yet we're building a sports book because we know there's still that desire for some to have that kind of in-person experience. Mm -hmm. But we also want to make sure that when we're providing that in-person experience, it's something that is beyond just that same ability to do what you can already do on the app. So like in our case, we're going to open up our Caesar sports book with a Guy Fieri kitchen and bar, you know, serving our uh, food and beverage operations. So we want to create a really unique experience for that opportunity to give people a 365 opportunity to come down, enjoy baseball and come to D-backs games, but also just enjoy our sports book, whether that be for basketball or football or baseball or hockey or any other sport that may be going on so that we can create this kind of full year destination around our ballpark. So we think it's a great opportunity for enhancement. Uh, we've been really excited about what we've seen since we launched in September uh, with our partners at Caesar Sportsbook. Um, and we think there's a lot of opportunity to continue to improve the overall experience around our ballpark and the engagement for our fans kind of moving forward. Best of luck with that, Kenny. Thank you very much. Wayne, Kenny, thank you so much for the time. We really could not do it without you, literally could not do it without you. Thank you to Spot On for the support. And thank you to the audience members for being with us today. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.